Welcome to Sinister Heroes. I'm your host, Danny Iniquitous. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, this is a channel about Dungeons and Dragons, where we try and take a darker tone with some of the characters and concepts we create. If you like what we do here, please like, share, and subscribe. Please keep commenting. We love to hear from you guys. We love to hear the great things you've done, the great characters you've created, and the incredible things DMs have done in your games and help support you throughout. So without further ado, we're going to jump into this week's video. This is going to be a different one. We're doing a race discussion, and we're talking about the Yuan T. The Yon T come to us from Volo's Guide to Monsters and were revised in Monsters of the Multiverse. We are eligible to play the Yon T Pure Blood, so I'll refer to them just as the Yon T. Uh, if you want to get in depth into the history of the Yon T, which I really suggest you do, uh, Mr. Rex is a great sequence of videos. Uh, the Dungeon Cast is a great sequence of videos. WebDM discusses them in a great, great, great creative way. Uh, and all those links are going to be in the description. So please check them out, support them. If you don't know who they are, get ready for a wonderful adventure into a great group of content creators. That being said, I love the Yonti Pure Blood. They are one of my favorite races to play. I am very, very fortunate to have DMs that were eligible to let me play them, and I will explain why that tends to be a bit of a problem as we go forward. If you don't want to dive too much into the lore behind them, or you just kind of want to build off of your own idea of what a snake person is, all for it, go for it, whatever your DM is going to allow you in your games, whatever really makes you feel joyful. If you want an idea, if you've ever seen the movie Equilibrium, the actual order that Christian Bale's character belongs to, that emotionless order that corrupts everything, that basically runs the whole world and wants them to live their life as they see fit, is a great representation of the Yonti. They have no emotion and they will destroy and consume everything, and anything that's not them is a problem. It is a fantastic way to really bring this authoritative usefulness of being non-emotional and being capable of extreme evil. It's fun. It's enticing. If you want to play a risky spy, you got to keep in mind that yon are known for their subtlety. That is a really big part of their culture. They want to be quiet, whispered, and not seen. There's a lot of concepts as to why that exists. It's a great thing to understand that evil bards, anyone that's high charisma, is very, very well in the wheelhouse of the Yuan Ting. Because they are charming. They are dangerous. They will pull you towards them and make you give them whatever it is they want. They're manipulative. They don't care. And if you die, they will eat you. They will sacrifice you and then eat you. Your life is nothing because you are not scaled. You are the scaleless ones, and in a lot of ways, you're filthy. And I love that concept. It is fun to play around. A lot of the times when I do get to play Yonti, I tend to make them as characters that are infiltrating society. They're pretending to be someone they're not because it's the only way to get close to people that can give them information that they need to bring back towards their people. They are wildly unloyal to even themselves and their gods they are ultimately trying to make themselves the epitome of power and that kind of drive works so well in campaigns it gives you a reason to overcome whatever evil because maybe you want that power maybe you want to steal it you want to know where it comes from and it gives you a perfect understanding as to why as an evil character you would want a party because you understand the use of them you understand how great numbers are needed to accomplish great things slavery is inherent to your background so you know having mass people do things in your favor and what you want the way you want it makes your life exponentially easier so getting a group of people that are very powerful to do the same thing you're after is really well in the wheelhouse it's an evil character by basis and it gives you this incredible reason to need to work with other people and network and build a party and accomplish a great goal. If you look at it through that standpoint, the Yonti have the best opportunity to be evil and in a group and not be detrimental to that group. And that's the best part about being an evil character. 
The base Yonti from Volo's Guide to Monsters gives you an ability score of plus two to charisma, plus one to your intellect. You are smart, you are charismatic, it works very, very well. You are deceptive, you need that charisma to lie and persuade. Your age is roughly the same as a human lifespan. There are some iterations of the Yonti that can live significantly longer, especially get if you if you get into the different casts and the different uh, types of Yonti that are out there. Some of them say they live up to 400 years old. Some of them say they can live centuries. It really doesn't matter. Age, in a lot of ways, is a justification of life experience. You can depict that really well as Yonti are trained from basically birth to subdue manipulate, use magic, and corrupt those around them. So you can be 25 and have the, all the world knowledge that a 300-year-old elf does. It's all about practical, talented experience, and you get that in droves as a Yonti. Your speed is 30 feet. Your size is medium in the Volo's Guide to Monsters. Though in Monsters of the Multiverse, you can be small for whatever crazy reason you would want to be small. I don't get it. Not my thing. I don't like the small folk usually, except dwarves, and I'll get into that later. Your speed, your base walking speed is 30 feet. You have dark vision of 60 feet, so you can see in darkness, which is great. It fits. You are a snake person hybrid. You have innate spellcasting. You know the poison spray cantrip, which in a lot of ways is a very difficult cantrip to make the most use out of. A lot of times you fight undead and fiends, and they are probably immune if not resistant to hard very difficult to get use out of though i'm kind of looking forward to more people diving into other monsters beasts dinosaurs things like that where poison spray can really take an advantage it is a pretty high damage dealing cantrip but again it's poison oriented you can also cast the animal friendship spell on unlimited times but you can only target snakes with it which is cool thematically you have this great chance to be this snake charmer and have them have this natural affinity to you it's exciting it's cool it works well in a variety of different ways so you're a beast mastery ranger and you happen to have snakes and now you and Copper encounter other snakes in the world so now you have a giant poisonous snake and you have another snake to help stay with you and protect each other now you're rocking two snakes it's a cool concept it's great for Adventuring, it's great for sending the snake out first to see if anything happens to it, making it go over traps or whatever, see if anything might trigger. Interesting, flavorful, not really useful, but it's kind of like a familiar, so maybe you might develop some sort of understanding or communication with that if you wanted to keep that for free. Also, at third level, you can cast the suggestion spell. Once you cast it, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. And charisma is your spellcasting ability for this. Again, suggestion is awesome. You can tell them to just take a walk. And for the next eight hours, they are going to take a walk. It is a great way to manipulate certain people to alleviate yourself from situations. Get certain people to leave. You can tell somebody, distract somebody. Or tell them your life story. And now this person is going to tell them your life story for eight hours. And prevent them from going anywhere. It's useful. It's useful in combat. You could tell somebody to completely remove all of their armor. And as long as nobody touches them, they're just going to sit there taking off their armor the whole time. The creativity of the player makes suggestion one of the most dangerous spells in the game. Because as long as you can target them with it, there's a chance you can completely disrupt their whole process. And it's very, very integral. It's very cool. It's very interesting. The concepts and what you can do is incredible. Next, you have magical resistance. As you are a magically created species, you have advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects, which is awesome. It's cool. This is why a lot of DMs don't want Yonti in their games, because it makes them too powerful. I get it. If you're like a Yonti paladin, you have plate armor... You have resistance to magical effects, then you have your auras, you're basically as close to being invulnerable as possible. Spells just don't work. Um, and I can understand that being very difficult for DMs to overcome, and then you have to build encounters specifically designed for that. And then every enemy has heat metal. Uh, it's a problem, and it, it's a lot for DMs to come up with a way to balance everything because of that. 
And if you have one party member that's that strong defensively and offensively, it throws everything out of whack. Your encounters have to be wildly scaled very hard, and I think that's a big reason why a lot of people don't let DMs into your game. The best way to counteract that is don't tend to pick races like that. Try and step away from Hexblades, even though I love Hexblades, and Paladins with your Yonti because it gives a balance. If you play Sorcerers, Wizards, or Bards, you're not as tanky. You do have a, uh, a risk and reward kind of way to you, how you play because you're not rocking heavy armor. It is difficult for them to get to you spell-wise, but physically they can just tear you apart. It makes you almost balanced in a way. And it's a great concept to really consider. It's something definitely worth mentioning to your DM if you're talking about playing a Yonti and they might be a little hesitant to do so. Poison immunity! You are immune to poison damage and poison condition. In Monsters in the Multiverse, this is your only difference. You are resistant to the poison damage and you have advantage on any save or anything that would prevent you from getting poisoned or to break out of being poisoned. It... It's more so a situation where you find yourself vulnerable to traps and um, monsters like beasts or, or poisonous animals, which tend to die out really early on. A lot of the times it's not as detrimental because most of the time you probably won't be targeted unless you're a tanker kind of character or, or you're the one trying to break a track for whatever reason. It is one of the things I love best about the Yonti, but immunity tends to throw DMs into a spiral, uh, and, and I can understand that, but understand that poison is so incorrectly done in 5e. It's, it's such a problem for how it works, for how effective it is, what you can use it on, the way the monster manual is set up, the way most campaigns are written that are module-based. It's so hard to use. I'm, in all honesty, maybe you'll get hit with like six animals that'll poison you. And then once you stop fighting animals in the forest, you never really encounter poison again. Unless it's a trap that most of the time you can just hold your breath and run through. Or if you don't require breathing, you can just walk through unharmed. And that's really where poison sits. I, I just really wish poison was better as a whole. There's a number of problems you face when selecting a Yonti as your race. First and foremost, it's getting into the game. You have to make sure to have an open discussion with the DM and try and actually present a case where it's viable for what you want. It's very easy to create a great backstory for a Yonti wanting to be part of an adventure. Any kind of problem, any kind of issue, whatever's happening in the world, the Yonti want to know about it. They will send a pure blood out to find out what that is, and that is a great basis. You are narcissistic, you don't trust anybody, you're not even really that loyal to anyone in your own cast, and you are looking for a way to rise above and gain power. Solving whatever problem it is in the world might do that, or might give you a key in how to get that. Bringing back that information to your Yonti is really, really important. That is inherent in all the Yonti based on the lore. If you want to deviate from the lore, that's fine, but you still have this great non-emotional understanding that you need people in order to accomplish great things. And it's easy to work that into a reason why you want to keep your party alive and why you want to work with them and why you want to make sure you don't get exposed as a UNT if your party's not okay with that. Or kind of building that so that way they know who you are. The abilities like magical resistance is something that's coming up more and more often with satyrs having it. Uh, gnomes always had a version of it where it's just intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saves. No one sees the bat and eyelash out of that, but I tend to dislike gnomes greatly. Uh, they just happen to just drive me up the wall. Uh, that being said, lots of players I've played with have played gnomes and I've loved them all. But as a race, I could just evaporate them and be totally cool with that. Um... So understanding magical resistance is a balancing issue and how they affect that is really important. Are you trying to be super tanky? Are you trying to metagame and be super broken? I can see a DM saying no based on that. Try and really work with that. If the DM has to basically build an encounter just to stop you and say you don't roll well that game, it is going to steamroll the rest of your party unless they're all characters of that kind of caliber. Understand the party you're with. 
and build your character around that so that way at least you have an idea of where you would go especially with a powerful race like the auntie they are powerful the poison immunity in the volos guide tends to be a lot stronger on paper than i've seen in game don't get me wrong a lot of the times you'll see traps that have like uh like an arrow that does poison damage but you'll take the piercing damage anyway and the poison damage would be more how often these traps happen and how often it's you that's going through them really depends on what your position is in the party. Are you the tank? Yeah, then you're probably going to get hit with these more often. A lot of the times, poison traps are myths that erupt uh, or, or things that just you have to endure. Where holding your breath can alleviate most of them. You won't be able to be poisoned at noble parties, but you will be able to see everyone else do it. And with a buff to charisma... I think faking it might be in your benefit. But it's important to know that you cannot make characters that are invulnerable if your DM is not prepared to do that. And if your DM is prepared to do that and the rest of your friends are not good at combat or maxing their characters, you're creating that problem. Because they have to balance everything out. Otherwise, you're just going to be thrown with all sorts of circumstances just to give you disadvantage just to make it balanced so that way you have to make these saves and it's not as easy for you to make them it becomes a problem and you do have to encounter a lot of compromise to make that happen but if you really want to play the race make sure to find a dm that is comfortable with doing so or at least is you're working in a way that you're not making yourself too powerful that's my best advice to you the second problem you're really going to face as a UNT is understanding that the rest of the world hates you. And it's not like tieflings where they'll throw rocks at you or like just not trust you. They see you and if they find out what you are, they'll kill you. That's kind of the setup. You exist, which means your people exist, which means all the disappearances in the area are because you're killing them, sacrificing them, and eating their loved ones. There is no way to make that work. You have to be concealed. You have to make sure people do not know what you look like or know any of your subtle snake-like appearances, your fangs, maybe you have scales, maybe you have snake eyes, whatever it is. They can't see it. They will kill you. That is a very fundamental thought, a very fundamental idea in being a snake person whose entire history has been plaguing the existence of everything else. Play into that. Take that risk. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. So really incorporate that if that's what you're going to do. It's a risk to be a Yonti. And they know it. They fully understand what that is. So be very mindful of what you are and what you're doing at all times. You are playing on a higher difficulty than everyone else. Our final thoughts. I love the Yonti. It is my favorite race to play. Whenever I get a DM that will let me do it, it is a joyous thing for me. I enjoy pretending I have emotions and knowing deep down I don't. I love playing a game of chess against people playing checkers. It is a very dynamic feel and you can give yourself this great noble presence to yourself where you know yourself to be greater than everything around you. And really, really lean into that and use these personal connections as a way to manipulate the game in your favor. Because eventually, people are going to find out what you are. And some people might be for you and some people might not. And it's important to get people on your side to defend you. It's a great way to very pragmatically look at the world. It's a great way to take emotion out of the equation and have this very clear clarity of thought. When it comes to circumstances with cities, with, with fights, battles, whatever it is, it's a lot easier to go, you know what, we're losing, let's go, and let's not tell those other people who are helping us. Because that's going to again guarantee our survival, that's going to get us out of here, and if they die, they die. But it gives you this great way to, if you accidentally metagame by thinking of concepts like that, when your character realistically shouldn't, because morally, you should care for other people, especially if they're willing to fight for you. It does, it does give you that leeway to, to, it might be not what you intended to think, but can't escape that thought, but it gives you a way in character to use that, because that's your yawn team mind taking over your masquerade. It's great for bards, it's great for characters that are going to get into nobility. If you wanted to play a Whispers bard, right up this alley. Works perfectly. 
it really sets you up to be this conniving, just trying to unearth what information you want and use it for your own benefit. It's fun. It's exciting. If you really want to play a class that requires you to be very, very smart and very careful with your own personal actions, absolutely cool. Very fun. I love the flavor. It's my favorite race to play. It's actually, surprisingly, the race I've played the most. And it's just such a joy to be a soulless snake person that eats everything. Uh, I have devoured party members when they have passed. I've devoured enemies. I've devoured my own Yonti friends. It is so great to embrace that kind of part of your character where you're so vile and just like everything is a matter of consuming more power to you that you'd sell everything out to get it, even your own gods. And that is... Mm, that is such a setup for such a delicious circumstance that can be played out in any way you want. So, without further uh, ado, let me bring this video to a close. If you made it this far, thank you so much for really listening to me rant about something that I love and I enjoy. And uh, please keep commenting. I want to hear about how you've played Yontees, why you would let them in your games, or why you don't. And thank you. Thank you so much for giving a spooky kid a chance.